Thank you everyone for joining me this week. This week, we're gonna be going over the next section in this building, business builder workshop brought to you by Thoughts Company, as well as Plumetheria Chamber of Commerce. Super excited to have you all here with me. 2021 is gonna be a very good year for small business. I know a lot of people went through a lot of challenges. That's why I set up this business builder workshop. It's completely free. If you're watching anywhere else, go over to the YouTube channel under Sean Patrick Maloney, M-O-L-O-N-E-Y, not to be confused with the Congressman. And you're gonna find all the different series that we've done so far. We're already about halfway through the series. We started off just talking about what is a business, what is a job, and we've worked our way all the way up to we're just starting to get into the core concepts of business. Today, we're gonna to talk about why do I always seem to pay myself last? This is a question you should be asking yourself as a business owner and figuring out right away. I know a lot of people do it. I know a lot of people think they're growing their business and that's why they do it. But today I want to talk about the dangers of it, how to not do it, and how to ensure that you stop prioritizing yourself in your business. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Maloney. Thanks for joining. First question I want to ask you, I'm going to give you one second to think about it. Do you have a budget? I know this seems like a very simple question, but to a lot of people, the truth is they'll probably lie and say yes question is, if no, why not? What are you hiding from? The truth is most of these are hiding from reality, hiding from the truth that you don't know how to make more out of what you have. So by not simply looking at the budget, you don't have to worry about it. Or by having that ever expanding mindset of I'm just simply going to do more, you start to think that that's the truth. You start to think that I'll just simply do more and that's how I'll make more because if I do more and sell more, I'll make more, which is just this repetitive cycle of moreness, which leads to more spending, more problems, more this, more that. What it doesn't lead to is more expansion in a positive manner. It leads to more troublesome expansion and more uncontrolled growth. Remember, your paycheck matters. So part of having a budget is budgeting and how much you need to earn as an individual to pay yourself. Oftentimes people don't think about this and they run a business and say, say they're mowing lawns, right? One of my first businesses, you know, 20 lawns for $50 a head. And at the end of the day, you have a thousand bucks. A lot of business owners say I made a thousand dollars today. What they don't do is break it down and analyze. So we're gonna talk a little bit about analysis and everything today here on this episode. First off, how to start paying yourself. Well, in order to start paying ourselves, if you're already an existing business, we need to figure it out. If you're a non-existing business, you want to build it into your budget from the beginning. So here are some places we can look. Check out your supply costs. This is obviously one of the places a lot of businesses are losing out. Not correctly spending enough time into figuring out supply, figuring out the logistics of where it's coming from. Oftentimes when we've worked with supply houses for many, many years, they take advantage of the relationship. They start to get comfortable. They say, this person's been buying for me for years. What I can do is just a steady three to 5% increase every single year. But what they're not paying attention to is the exponential growth factor of adding that many people in, in the way it grows. I mean, adding that many costs in, in the way it goes, 5%, 3%, 5%, 3%. Because remember, 100 times 5% is 105%. But 105% times 5% is now a higher number at each increment, right? Because it's going to go up by $2, uh, 25 cents or so every single run. As we continue to use that exponential growth to the point where we outpace the market. And this happens often with supply houses, especially food supply, paper goods, things like that, weekly delivery type items, not quite as much on inventory items at a higher dollar just because they know your retail versus wholesale value, it must maintain a certain thing. But one thing people don't pay attention to a lot is the daily use items. Study your profit and loss statements. If you don't know what a profit and loss statement is, profit and loss statement is simply a mathematical transaction that reflects what went on in your business. It's simply the money coming in and where it went, every single spot that it went to, everything from postage to um, fuel costs, to supply costs, cost of goods sold, all that. Review your rent. This is another one. Right now, we have a great time as far as commercial because there's a lot of businesses that are struggling and moving around. This means we may be able to look at what we're renting and figure out a way to either renegotiate with our current landlord 
or move on to a different location. Also reviewing your rent in the sense of if you're a place that sees absolutely no positive effect by your location, yet you're in an iconic location, what are you doing? Are you building a shrine to yourself or are you building a business that's successful? Now, mind you, I have a 7-Eleven, a CVS, a Dunkin' Donuts. I want to be directly on that front corner. But if I have a business where there's no chance that anyone's going to randomly show up in my front door, and the only reason I have that corner lot is to help my ego, I want to simply move. Reviewing your rent. Rent can be a huge cost, and rent is something you need to look at with the next one, which is analyzing your utilities. Some places you're able to find all included. Some places you end up with a triple net. Depending on your lease type, it can all be different, but analyzing the utilities can be a big one. If you're renting from somebody else and they don't care about the building, you're paying your utilities cost. You have 5,000 square feet of space and you're blowing heat in there and it's going right out into the environment. You need to be paying attention to that. Or if you're working with all electric equipment and you realize it's all outdated, simply buying new refrigerators may drop your utility costs. Remember folks, when we're running businesses, Yes, profit is important. Yes, growth is important. Yes, all that's important. But what keeps the business going is called cash flow. So by simply reducing our cash flow and our monthly expenses by buying a thing like a new refrigerator or say a walk-in cooler compared to five fridges, suddenly our monthly output drops by hundreds of dollars a month when we find these savings. So reviewing your rent, looking at the landlord, looking at what they've done, looking at what you're doing, that's a huge part of saving money. Next up, do cost analysis on jobs. Doesn't matter whether you're making scarves or you're building skyscrapers, there is going to be a cost analysis that can be done on the job. Time, money, materials, right? We need to look at the time in, the materials in, and what else investment-wise did it take to sell it? Marketing, things like that. Because when we do a cost analysis on jobs for a lot of companies, we figure out that they're not charging enough. There are quite a few businesses, right, where I'm sure maybe some of you might even sympathize with this. You're working 80 hours a week. You're always booked. You're always going. You're always paying everything. But at the end of the day, there's not enough to pay yourself. That is when it's saying that, hey, listen, I'd rather be making money and working 60% of the time than working 100% of the time not making money. Because I can figure out how to fill that other 40% of the time with money-making activities as I continue to grow. But sometimes you need to rise the pricing or other times you might say, oh, we don't have enough customers. We could actually, if we had a thousand people in the skating rink instead of 500, we could charge 75% of the money that we charge normally and still make more money by having that 100%. So it's a matter of analyzing the job costs and whether it's up or down scaling, making sure that it works. And that's where the fundamentals come in of creating the budget. By creating the budget, we'll say, okay, on average, we're expecting a thousand clients. In order to get a thousand clients, the cost per acquisition is three dollars a client. So we have three thousand dollars in marketing costs and acquisition costs. Okay, here we go. If we are selling an item to a thousand people for ten bucks, that's we have seventy percent of the money left. Now we pay our employees, staff. As we whittle our way down, we say, well, what's the bottom line, as they call it? What is the net? What is the amount of money? Because remember, the net is not your paycheck, right? The net is the profit for the business. Your paycheck should have been in above when you were creating the budget as part of the cost. But far too often, business owners just take their costs and say, I don't cost anything. My investment is my time. But the reality is they get caught in this crunch where they're actually giving their own time away and they don't realize it. And that's why they're booked 24 seven and making no money. So cost analysis, looking at utilities. Cost. And guys, I hate to break it to you, right? I just wanna be straight up with you right here. It's gonna get awkward sometimes. In order to do business, sometimes you have to stand up to other people and say, I am no longer accepting the raw end of the deal. It's business. This is business. We're renegotiating rent, whether you like it or not. Sorry, I'm not sorry. It is what it is. Business is business. It's not friendship. It's not all this other stuff. It can certainly be. It can certainly be great business relationships. But when it comes time to need to be awkward, be awkward and protect yourself. All right. Hidden money. So where is the hidden money in most companies? Like, so we take all this money in and we don't make any money. We don't earn anything. We don't have any profit. Why is that? Like, where did all that money go? First, unnecessary expenses. This is a very, very, very common one for businesses. I can't tell you how many times I have interviewed or talked with a business that's running 
that has an enormous amount of unnecessary expenses. What am I talking about? Everything from company cars and jets all the way down to office assistants that are just there to look pretty, all the way across to paper supplies that are sitting in cabinets that were bought 30 years ago, all the way across inventory being thrown away. Unnecessary expenses exist in all businesses. It's learning how to cut them out and understand that even if you cut out, say you cut out $5 a day worth of unnecessary business expenses and you're the owner, so all the extra money goes to you, you're talking over $1,800 annually in extra money around. $1,800 a year across 10 years, $18,000. Last I checked, that's a lot of money. And if we're trying to pay a business down, we take that $18,000, we put it onto our debt. We minus out the compounding interest and everything. We're talking, we are a landslide of different than we were yesterday. Unnecessary labor costs. I talked about that, you know, just the person, the receptionist that isn't needed, the person that's supposedly doing things that isn't doing things. The fact that you, for some reason, don't understand that outsourcing can do better than your company. The fact that outsourcing could come in and drop ship your item and there's no need for your packing logistics team anymore. I'm not saying you need to be heartless and fire everybody, folks. I'm saying you need to catch up with 2021 if you're running a business that's from the late 2000s and you're running it in 2021, you're going to get run into the ground because there are plenty of other people that are understanding drop shipping. They're understanding automation. They're understanding systemization, they're understanding the computer. So make sure that you are checking that out. Unnecessary equipment. This one is super common, especially in the construction trades or any other trade where there's a lot of equipment being sold to make the job easier. I see everything from companies having huge front end loaders with big, huge buckets on them costing hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just to move trash around all the way down to people who you go in their kitchen and they have every kitchen gadget you can possibly imagine but yet when they cook for the restaurant, they don't use any of it. Unnecessary equipment has a lot of costs to it. Number one, the purchase price of the equipment. Number two, the maintenance cost of the equipment. Number three, the cost to move said equipment out of the way because it's in the way all the time in the working thing. And number four, what to do with the equipment in the long run. So there's a lot of problems that come with unnecessary equipment, but the biggest one is the fact that it ties up money, time, and energy. There is nothing you own in your life that does not take attention at some point, whether it's oil in it, grease in it, tighten it, sharpen it, move it, change it, wash it, whatever it be, it's always taking your attention. And if not, it's depleting. Profit in the trash. Profit in the trash. I really want to talk to you restaurant folks. I really want to talk to you guys. The food service industry is infamous for this, whether it be an ice cream shop that scoops a whole three-gallon tub of ice cream, never scrapes down the sides and throws away two to three cups of ice cream per can, Remember, back to that math, let's just do this one really quick on a calculator here just so we get it right. We're going to put the calculator up. So if we said three ice creams per every container and you're selling 50 a week, that's 150 ice creams. We're going to put $3.55 on them, right? Here we go. This is a weekly total times 52 is an additional $27,690 inside of your trash rail by simply not scraping them down. Now, if I was to exacerbate that and say French fries, I would say like things like toppings, things like fresh salad, things like say you have a food bar, all these things, slow it down. Remember that it is cool and there is a sexiness to saying that we have run out of something, not all the time, but running on that edge of success where you're telling people that you could possibly run out can be important. But remember, prop in the trash, it is everywhere. I mean, say construction companies, you're cutting wood all day long and throwing out the scraps. And then later on, you're cutting a piece of wood that's shorter out of a full length piece of wood and not using your scraps. There is so much money in the trash barrel and most modern businesses, it's unbelievable. Profit in the trash is a big problem, but also realize, right? We got to look at labor costs, expenses versus profits versus potential of profit from that trash item. If I'm cutting a two by four, I'm up on a ladder, I cut the end off, it drops down the ladder, hits the bottom step and goes away. And then I cut another one and I do the same thing. Climbing down that ladder and I'm making $100 an hour. It's going to take me 10 minutes to get down there. I need to take 100 divided by 60 and look at what 10 minute increments of 100 get me. So that if that say said item doesn't cost at least $1.10, $1.20, I need to just move on because I am spending more on labor than I'm spending on the idea of the thing. And I think I did the math wrong. 10, 20. So if you're thinking about it that way, you do need to think about it. 
but also that's why you look at how you're doing your business and your labor expenses. And sometimes you need to get an errand person. You need to get that person that isn't the skilled, skilled labor set person that comes at night, cleans the job site up. When I had my tree and landscape company, one of the jobs that I found that was one of the biggest profit rippers for me was sending my trucks down to the gas station. So what did I do? I got an older person that was interested in working early in the morning that came in. They loved doing the job because they weren't really looking for physical. They got in each one of the trucks. They drove it down to the gas station. They filled it up. They filled up the gas tank on it. They set up all the equipment for the morning. And when the crews showed up, all they had to do was get in and drive. So if you were to take, again, back to that mathematical equation, I have 16 guys working for me. On average, they're losing a half hour a day. It's eight hours a day into gas. We times that by a five-day work week. We're talking I get one free employee, 40 hours a week. So this guy that was coming in for 10 to 20 hours was actually saving me 10 to 30 hours a week in pay. And he had another job. So I created another job. I saved money and everybody was happy and everyone was making more money. So a lot of you might be saying, well, ooh, all this stuff sounds like I need to start cutting people, cutting processes, cutting staff, all that stuff. But no, paying more attention to how you do it and building a better structure is what we're talking about. And that's why I said build processes. Bad processes can ruin you, right? If you have a bad process, like you have your most expensive tree guy filling all your trucks with fuel at $45 an hour and it takes him six hours, that was some pretty expensive fuel. You want to make sure you have a good process to how it's done. Broken systems. Broken systems can ruin everybody. Broken systems are when you're not paying attention to things and people are just doing it. If every single time a certain job happens, oh my God, every time you send the guys out to paint, they always get complaints about the paint on the rug. We have a broken system. Do you have your people taping things off? Are they bringing the necessary booties to wear on their feet? Are they wearing painted clothes? Are they putting down a painter's cloth? When we look at your system, chances are you just said to them, go there, do this, do that, do that. Did you give them a form or did you give them some sort of standardized system that tells them this is exactly how we do it? Or did you just say, go paint and don't get any on the rug? The truth is most people say, go paint, don't get any on the rug. And they don't actually teach anybody what they mean by it. Staffing issues. Staffing issues can be a lot of different ones. There's this, there's this whole series of these. We could talk about days on end on them. Staffing issues is everything from under hiring to over hiring. It's everything from allowing people to run the show versus you running the show. Is everything from having people quit all the time and understanding why, having people with bad attitudes. One of the biggest things about staffing issues, it's called a mirror. You have to look in that mirror. A lot of times when we run into staffing issues, they're actually self-issues. They're our own problems that we exacerbate and we don't bring up. We don't allow people to talk about them and we always pretend like they don't exist. Most of the time the staff has problems and stuff, it's due to either lower level or upper level management. Oftentimes we hire a manager, we know they're not doing what they're supposed to, we turn a blind eye to it and then we don't understand why our entire staff goes sour. The manager leads the way, the manager needs to do what they need to do, they need to be the knowledgeable one, but they also need to be the controller of the core culture of the company. So staffing issues a lot of times can be tough because you get to go in and basically do a swipe, you got to take out a bunch of people at once. And I know people, especially business owners, they, you know, they take it not too easy to get rid of their staff because their staff helped them build the company they built. But sometimes you have to, again, pick up your pants, get onto it. And you got to say, listen, no longer is this going to exist because it's hurting my life. I need to learn to pay me first. No longer can I pay you while well, you have all these problems and you tell me about your billing problems and all these, even though I pay your full paycheck and I'm not making a paycheck. So fixing your staffing issues is a huge thing. And the other thing to remember is when you have staffing issues, chances are the rest of your staff is getting annoyed by the issue. So you could lose good people to bad people. So by not making the decision, like they say, hire slow, fire fast, by not making the decision to get rid of the person, you actually could be hurting other people within your company without even knowing that they're actually affected by it. Pricing is last but not least. Pricing is a whole study. We need to understand that pricing Everything from an e-com store where we learn to sell at profit margins that are very slim by selling thousands or millions of them across the country, down to the local restaurant where pricing goes on food costs and everything. Pricing is something you need to understand inside, outside, upside down. By creating that budget, you can also look at the pricing, but price forecasting, checking out what's going on. This is stuff that's going to save you, but also allow you to pay attention to where that hidden money is. Whether you're underpricing or overpricing, if you're underpricing, you're giving away the house, you're not making money because things are too cheap. 
You're overpricing, you're not attracting enough clients, so profits are slim because sales are down. That perfect money spot is gonna put the most money in your pocket. So some of the side effects of not paying yourself. I know the drug companies always like to put up their side effects. So here today, we're gonna to put up the business side effects. Number one, not paying yourself. You can find yourself have a lack of enthusiasm. You show up every day and feel underappreciated even though it's your own business. First off, I wanna tell you to wake up and get off that because there ain't nobody to come help you. So make sure as a self-employed person, you get past the idea of feeling like there's somebody that needs to come help you because otherwise you can run into a whole bunch of trouble on the idea of that there isn't anybody that's ever going to help you out whatsoever. It, it, that's just how it is. So keep that in mind that you're not gonna have people helping you. So you need to get your own enthusiasm, paychecks enthusiastically, grow people. Personal credit issues. If you're not paying yourself and you're just constantly shoveling money into the business, you can run into personal trouble. The separation between you and your business is gone. Your own bank accounts are going down. Your own housing is in problems. It's also possibly that you put your house up on leverage. If you watch those shows like Ramsey or any of these other chef shows or Shark Tank or anything, one of the first things most of the people do, which is just kind of silly when it comes to negotiating, but they explain that they have no money. They've got problems, right? They've put their house up. They've leveraged everything. It's okay to leverage everything. I'm perfectly fine with it. As long as you're educatedly leveraged as in you're paying attention to where your debts are going and you really feel okay that there is an end in sight, that there is an other side to the goal. But for those of you who are just endlessly paying down the last debt with a new debt and you're endlessly thinking that something's going to change outside of yourself, that some extenuating circumstance, such as that the clients are finally going to notice your amazing product, you have some problems. And then also you have to focus if you're that person on the idea of like, you're focused way too heavy on product centric versus client centric in relationship building. Because ultimately people don't buy products because they're the best product. They buy products because they're reliable, they're durable, they're constantly marketed correctly. They're a lot of different things, but the best, I don't know, because McDonald's wouldn't have sold so many hamburgers if it was all about the best. So Burger King wouldn't be named Burger King, so on and so forth. But the thing that they did is quality as far as they kept it consistent. It may not have been high quality, it may not have been low quality, but it was consistent quality. Relationship issues. So when you come home from work and you're not getting paid and you go and you see your wife or husband or whoever else, they may say to you, what the heck, how come we can't go out ever? You work 80 hours a week and we never have any money. Or they may say, you know, dear, I don't think we can put our house on leverage. You need to quit. You need to move into a job where we have a secure living. We have children. There's lots of different reasons, but relationship issues, it's sad because you want to be honest with your husband, wife, spouse, whatever. You want to make sure they understand what's going on. But at the same time, you don't want it to creep into your personal life to where you're in arguments with your family, friends, and everything like that over your business. And then being left in debt if the business fails. So we talked about personal credit issues earlier. Well, if you start leveraging all this stuff, you cross over the LLC corporation line. Now you're in your personal business. You're on your personal social security number, so you can end up with no house, no enthusiasm, relationships issues, and being in business debt. This, I hate to say it, guys, but this is why a lot of business owners end up on a bad side. They end up an alcoholic. They end up with problems. They end up in different spots where they shouldn't be, but they feel like the world didn't treat them fairly. Don't feel like that. Pay attention to the fact that you have control. You have everything, and you want to make sure that you suddenly have this eye-opener to some of those places of hidden money and to where you can find it. All right, here's a few things to watch out for. So feeling like you need to do more to deserve a check. This one as a business owner is common, the feeling of, well, if it's not making money, it's my fault. Well, sometimes you gotta do those pricing studies and things. Sometimes you gotta look at your employees. Sometimes you gotta look at your products. Sometimes you gotta look at your marketing, but you need to understand that you deserve a check from day one. You deserve to make the money per hour that you should be making. If you're not paying yourself by the hour and you're calling something quote unquote business profit, you're lying to yourself because if you were not a part of the company, like if you were to put your company up to sale today and an investor like a Shark Tank investor bought your company and they planned on just owning it as a business owner, would the company still run? Would the profit sheet be accurate? And the truth is the answer to that question is no, if you're not paying yourself. So you should be getting a check from the beginning. Feel like you could not pay both you and your staff. Again, 
you and your staff should be being paid or your pricing is off. If you cannot figure it out in your model, you have a break in your chain and you need to figure out where it is. Another one, feeling like you should sell assets or dive deeper into debt, hope for the original, for the eventual check. This one's okay if you have an understanding of what you're doing, but far too often I meet somebody who has absolutely no clue why they're doing more. They just know they're not making the money now. So they're gonna clear out everything from their 401k to whatever. Not saying that you shouldn't chase your company, not saying that you shouldn't chase your dreams, but I am saying that you should have an understanding of where you're going before you suddenly liquidate your entire net worth into the business. Sometimes you do have to walk away. I don't know. But I would say most of the time you don't. It's just about actually taking the time to take the steps to really think about it and thinking about today as day one. Similar to when you see those shows, I brought it up before, but like a Gordon Ramsay, when he goes in and tries to adjust the people's business, you see within 24 to 48 hours, they're trying to go back to where they were. Be okay with different. If it's not going well, it's not your fault per se, but it is your problem. It is something you need to deal with. And it isn't something that someone's going to come get you out of. So you need to take care of it. And then hiding from the phone. Once you're already in trouble and stuff, hiding from the phone ain't going to get any better. The people aren't going to go away. Talk with the people, negotiate terms, negotiate contracts, talk with people, say, hey, listen, you know, this month was terrible. Go get wiped this out. I'm going to pay you back, but I'm going to need it broken into quarterly payments. I'm just trying to be dead honest with you. Some people will say no. Some people will say yes, but hiding from the phone, it doesn't get rid of it. And it certainly doesn't get you any of the yeses. So the more yeses you get, the more time you buy yourself, the more you pay attention to it. But just remember when there's trouble, don't hide from the phone. And another thing, failing to make the necessary changes, showing up every day, leaning on your hands, staring at your computer, watching your bank account drain as a business owner that's failing is not a way towards making your own changes and towards your own paycheck. You need to start making the necessary changes. Like I said to you guys at the beginning, it can be awkward. We sometimes have to say, I'm sorry, you don't have a job anymore. We sometimes have to say, I'm sorry, I'm not buying that product or your company anymore. I know we're good friends, but I have a 30% opportunity for less money to buy that same said product from another supplier. Sorry that you guys can't do that. Remember, this is business. This isn't personal. Final statement, great news. You now know what you should do, to pay, why you should pay yourself and how to. Now it's time to reap the rewards of being a true business owner. So guys, you know all about it. You know, we just talked for a half hour all about why to pay yourself, how to pay yourself, when to pay yourself. It's time to be an entrepreneur. It's time to be a business owner and actually pay yourself. So I want you to immediately, after you take this call, after you've watched this video, I want you to think. I want you to think about everything that I said today. I don't want you to just watch these videos just because, you know, hey, Trump put up these free videos. I want you to watch this video and analyze where you're at. Whether you're profitable or not, doesn't matter. Analyze where you're at because profitable businesses, that's when you got to really watch yourself because that's when it's easy to get lazy. When you're hurting, you kind of start watching everything because you're worried about why you're hurting. But when you're doing really well, sometimes you're hurting more than you think you are because you could be doing 10 times as well as far as profit and most of the money is just going towards the idea of paying down things that are overpriced and being overpaid for. So be careful of that yourself as a business owner. Next up, the months ahead. So we just finished up, we're in module three. We just did um, the third of the classes in module three. Next week, we're gonna be talking about how can I take my job and create a business. So I'm talking about people that are stuck in a small business that they're basically, you know, their own chef on their own business and they cook and clean and do all that. Or maybe they're a landscaper, but they're mowing the lawns, taking the calls, billing the clients. So I'm talking about how to take that from a job and to create a business out of it. And after that, we're going to get into module four where it's time to grow. We're going to turn really into some heavy business concepts. And then in module five, business concepts, and then the commencement, May 6th. If you haven't watched the past videos, make sure you jump on my YouTube channel, Sean Patrick Maloney. You'll find all those past ones right there. Here's where you can follow me. SPM is my personal brand, just my overall talking on stage, everything like that. Movement and Realty is the brokerage. We're right here out of social Massachusetts, but we service Massachusetts and all of Rhode Island. We have a constant need to hire new agents. So if you're looking to grow yourself in a new business or you're looking to expand your already existing real estate business, reach out to us. 
And last but not least, Thoth Company, which is one of the companies that is hosting this event for you guys today. Thoth Company is a consulting business, all about turnaround, startups, profitability studies, exit strategies, all sorts of different business techniques towards making more money. I have two podcasts you can check out, Real Facts on Real Estate for Real Estate Professionals, mostly real estate agents, teaching you how to be a better agent, how to get offers accepted, everything from relationship building, lots of great free info, paired with a Facebook group, paired with a web letter, as well as a website, www.realfactsonrealestate.com. And Homeownership is our homeowner, seller, buyer podcast, talking all about the process of buying, selling, and owning a home. Gives you a lot of great information that's available free. That one also is paired with a Facebook group, a newsletter, and a blog. If you guys want to reach out to me, you can jump directly on my website as well as business website, as well as consulting website. Love to talk with you. If you're thinking ever about hiring a business consultant or you're watching this series and you're saying there's a lot of information here, I'd love to take advantage of it, but I don't quite know how to implement it, then reach out to us. We'd love to help you. And we have affordable packages from everything from small business to really, really large businesses and explaining how to take your business to the next level. Thanks again for joining me this week. And I look forward to talking to you at the next module.